tonight, the COVID surge continues and fatalities are steadily increasing. Attorney Stanley Felix adds his voice to calls for a reduction in the prison population. And social and political commentator Richard Pitakin says St. Lucia cannot afford to close its borders. The details of these stories and more are coming up. This is the Hot 7 Nightly News with lovely St. Amy Bull. Good night. It is Thursday, the 4th of February, 2021. Welcome to the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. I'm lovely St. Amy Joseph. Thank you for joining us. Attorney Stanley Felix has added his voice to calls for there to be action to decrease the prison population. He agrees with recommendations that inmates on remand receive review of their cases and that leniency be extended for minor offenses. We all know that there are persons who are currently on remand for... Um, minor summary offenses. And some of those offense, some of those people are there because perhaps they could not have met um, the bail, con bail conditions. And some of them are there um, because they have nobody to fend for them. I believe that in an effort to reduce the population, there must be a comprehensive review of some of those uh, minor offenses and where possible grants exercise some degree of um, leniency as regards to the conditions of bail. Felix believes that the series of events that transpired on Tuesday and ended with a show of force by prison officers to contain an inmate rebellion at the Bodley Correctional Facility was an expression of frustration with the legal system. They complained about the conditions and they complained quite vociferously about um, the opportunity to get a court hearing. That is a problem. I could testify to that. Um, COVID has not made it any easier. There were long delays and still is delays, still are delays in terms of um, the commencement of proceedings or recommencement of proceedings in a lot of those matters. Most times, um, um, court dates are not kept for one reason or the other. Of course, the system is under pressure, we understand that. But foremost, we have to safeguard the rights of citizens. The fact that you are incarcerated does not mean that you're not a citizen, and it certainly does not mean that you do not have rights. The attorney underscores that the law gives inmates the right to a trial in a reasonable time. He points to the legal maxim that justice delayed is justice denied, and further, that every individual is innocent until proven guilty. How would you feel if you were in there, knowing that you are innocent and you were subjected to the conditions that these current inmates are subjected to? So while some of us may say, oh, well, leave them there, they deserve to be there, the truth is, rights are rights, they are entitled to their rights, and so the system must do better than it's doing now. Felix urges the judiciary to move with alacrity to review the remand population and determine what can be done to expedite their cases. On Wednesday, Justice Minister Herman Gil Francis confirmed that the Cabinet of Ministers had given approval for a committee to be established to determine the feasibility of bench trials as opposed to jury trials to address the current backlog of cases. Prison Director Hilary Herman says while he cannot guarantee that there will never be another inmate uprising at the Bodley Correctional Facility, he can guarantee that there will always be decisive action to restore law and order. Herman says inmates will not be allowed to overrule the facility. The director of the Bodley Correctional Facility, Hilary Herman, says COVID-19 provided Bodley inmates on remand an excuse to stage a rebellion, and they seized the opportunity. The inmates had refused to return to their cells peacefully and then proceeded to burn mattresses at the facility. The prison director says appropriate action was taken to contain the inmate uprising. The inmates now know that they cannot push the envelope because as they push, we will push back. So that has stabilized the facility. However, we're still trying to meet the um, request for more information on the individual cases, which is something that has to come from the court. So we will be pursuing that to see how soon we can get more information or additional information to them. 
All right, and your thoughts on the possibility of the implementation of bench trials as opposed to jury trials? I know that's something that uh, the Cabinet of Ministers is looking into to help expedite the process for some of the cases. Yes, I, th I think that is welcome news. I was informed of that, uh, that that has been approved by the Cabinet of Ministers, that approval for the um, judge-only trial. Um, we look forward to presenting that. Um, however, um, some uh, when I actually um, told the, most of the inmates that that was coming, and uh, there were quite a few that were not interested in that. They wanted a jury trial, so you'll get a mixed feeling on that. Herman sought to reassure the public that order has been restored at the prison. I cannot guarantee that there will not be another inmate uprising. However, if there is, we will push back and take control. Uh, we will not allow inmates to run the facility. Our job is to keep them safe, keep them secure, and hold them over for the next trial date. We have really, we have no problems with the penal inmates. Our problem currently exists in the remand block. And their major issue is the court dates. Um, we, of the list of grievances they had, COVID-19 was number, was the last on the list. The director confirmed that three inmates suffered injuries that required medical attention. He says the use of force by prison officers was needed to quell the uprising, given the level of aggression being displayed by the inmates. An investigation is underway. Meanwhile, it has been confirmed that one of the eight inmates who tested positive for COVID-19 has passed away. The inmate had other underlying issues and died a few days after being taken to hospital for care due to presenting with COVID-19 symptoms. Meanwhile, Wednesday, the Ministry of Health reported two COVID-19-related deaths. Death 17 is a 65-year-old male with underlying medical illnesses. Death 18 is an 82-year-old male with underlying medical illnesses. Both of the individuals were in care at the time of their passing. Confirmation was also received of 77 cases of COVID-19. One of the cases is a 41-year-old male non-national. The other 76 cases are St. Lucian nationals who range in ages 12 to 67 years from Babono, Ancillary, Grosley, Denry, Labry, Castries, and Viewfort. There have been 73 recoveries, bringing the total number of active cases in country to 759. The new cases now bring the total number of cases diagnosed in country to date to 1,556. You're watching the Hot 7 TV Nike News. Still to come, accountant and commentator Richard Peterkin says St. Lucia cannot afford to close its borders. The National Youth Council calls for respect for youth employed as COVID-19 warders. And Ras Iper Isaac decries what he says is a lack of support for micro-businesses.